you do not. That's a better job. Grace and bone stick. Better than sales and commission. Does Elijah have it? It's all in there. It's all in there. Settlement. No? All right, look to the screen. We're going we're gonna to make our confession. Are you ready? As we bring our tithes and offerings to the Lord, we're believing for jobs, better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, growth in business, settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills decrease, bills paid off, blessing and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all my financial needs that I may have more than enough to take care of my family, to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Say amen. amen. Man, what a cool church this is. I like all the flannel shirt stuff. One of these Sundays, we're going to have a Carhartt Sunday. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. I see a trip to Blaine's in my future. Because Kevy will have to have something new. Right? I give permission for all the women to go get something new. Car hearts. Kevy one time found a pair of pink Timberland boots. And then when she went through security, it took her 20 minutes to unlace them, take them off, go through, and then lace them back up. But she looked good. Believe me. Oh, my, my. You know, that's what's important. All right, let's pray. We're, I'm going to preach a little bit. Okay? And it's going to be the saddest sermon you've ever heard. You're going to go, man, what's wrong with P PSA? No, you don't believe that? No? All right. Father, I bless your name. I thank you that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in all of us. I thank you that we don't have the spirit of quit, but we have the spirit of victory. And I thank you, Father, that we are overcomers and that nothing is impossible because we believe in you. And I thank you that even today, today, the 29th of October, Miracles will happen. Signs and wonders can happen. Things will change. Things will get better. What was hurting will stop hurting. What we're lacking will manifest. I thank you, Father. You're a mighty God, and we believe in you and trust you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. All right, give somebody a high five. If you're cool, give them a bump. <laughs> Oh, glory. Glory. Thank you, Charity. We're going to buy, an, we're going to take an offering and buy you some shoes. Winter's coming, all right? It's, yeah. <laughs>
I don't know if we have enough candy. We didn't, did we? You ever see, anybody in here ever see the first movie, Jaws, the first one? Remember when they saw the shark for the first time? Remember what the sheriff said? We're going to need a bigger boat, man. I believe we'll be ready today. Don't you? Open your Bibles to the Gospel of Mark. Oh, by the way, I have my phone up here, not because I'm texting while I'm preaching. Kevy's, Kevy made it home last night, but her suitcase didn't. Aw. Aw. Yeah, that's all my stuff was. So American Airlines is going to call me when they're close to delivery. So if I'm preaching and I say, yo, yep, leave it on the front porch, I'm talking to American Airlines. Okay? Is that cool? Are we good? I, I can do more than one thing at a time. And then I'll even give them a, ah! Set it on the front porch. Ah! <laughs> oh, mercy. You want to know what the yep, yep, yep is for? You know your other cousin, Kristen? Uh, a few years ago, they were at Steak and Shake. It's a fine dining establishment here in West Michigan. And Mooch, you know Mooch, uh, is fearless and little. And the server was a young man that when you gave him what you wanted, he would say, yep, 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 yep. And then they go to the next one and say, I want a cheeseburger, fries, a strawberry shake. Ooh. Ooh. Sorry, that was my order. And he would say, yep, 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 yep. When it got to Mooch, Mooch said, why do you keep saying yep, 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 yep? And so one Sunday I told that story. Everybody thought it was funny, and then halfway through the sermon, it got Lutheran quiet in this room. And I said, are you hearing me? And somebody in the back, I think over there, I said, are you hearing me? And they said, yep, 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 yep. <laughs> That's how we do church in Kalamazoo. <laughs> All right. Mark 16, go to verse 15. My, my, my. Are you there? Did I give you the right place? Are you in Proverbs 15? Or Mark. Mark 16, verse 15. I'm waiting for Marissa to find it. Hang on, help her out, Tyler. Are you there? Can you confirm that, Sienna? Yeah, she's there. You didn't even look. Man. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. Are there any demons in America? Yeah? I tell you what, they're manifesting right now. Just, just pay attention to who goes anti-Israel, and you'll find out there's a demon spirit behind that. I read an article where a wealthy billionaire who graduated from Harvard stopped. He said, I will not donate another dollar to this university. I thought, cool. Money has a loud voice, especially when you give millions. So I sent him our address <laughs> and just said, if you, if you all want a place to, to donate to somebody who loves Israel, right. we'll do it. Right? I mean... What would change if we had a million dollars show up every month? Huh? We'd, 
we'd have that indoor golf simulator, right? What would we do with a million dollars? Huh? You've already spent it. We haven't even got it. You know what we'd do? We'd build a soundboard ten times the size of the one we have now with every gizmo and gadget and We could spend it. Yeah, we need a new parking lot, don't we? How many cans of ravioli would that buy? We feed a little school up the road. Yeah, raviolis. The meat, ones with the meat, not the cheese. I saw a can that said cheese-filled raviolis. What? What's that for? I better keep reading here. These signs will follow those who believe in my name. They'll cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere. Why did they go out and preach everywhere? You, you picked that up. He suggested they go out and preach. He commanded them. And they went out and preached everywhere. And the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. Hmm. Now, Here's what I want to speak about today. I got a lot here. This afternoon, we're going to do this thing I never thought we'd do. I don't know how many years have we been doing it, trunk or treat. Close to 10 years. And I'm going to tell you right now, no fears, it's not going to rain. Okay, no rain. I've decreed it. It might snow, but it's not going to rain. <laughs> hey, hey, calm down, calm down. <laughs> Kevy still has her flip-flops on, so it's not going to snow. <laughs> Till there's three inches of snow, and then she's grumpy for a day or two. Yeah, sweet Kevy, when she's got to put shoes and socks on. But it's not going to rain tonight, and I don't know how many people are going to come. But we're ready for them. But what we're going to do is shine. Okay? You hear me? We're doing this not because we're big fans of Halloween. But we're big fans of people. And we want to share Jesus with them. We want them to know there's a church here. And this is what church people look like. I remember, listen, I remember before I got saved. I used to drive by churches and think, what do they do in there? And then it seemed like the only Christian I ever met was a weirdo. And so that, was a, that wasn't the Holy Ghost, that was the devil. And so the, my advice to all of us is don't be that weird Christian. I mean, you could be a cool, Bible-believing, spirit-filled Christian, but you don't have to be weird about it. You don't have to dress like a pilgrim. Like you just got off the Mayflower and you're, you know, pretty funny. Finally got you to laugh after all these years. Right? And if you are that weird Christian, just, I guess, be weird, I guess. But you might be the only Jesus people see. Okay? So this afternoon when we do this trunk or treat, we're going to have people that didn't go to church today. We're going to look at people, now pay attention. We're going to look at people who have an eternal soul. Now, there, there's a saying, I want to say it correctly. Uh, for instance, uh, I don't know if you guys know who this is, but yesterday I read a headline that Matthew Perry passed away, 54 years old. Spent most of his life stoned, had all the money he ever needed, but he's gone. He, he, yeah, they found him in his pool. They don't know if he, he was 
Anyway. He's gone. He, you, would, you, would, you would hear the secular media say he's entered into eternity. But actually, the second you were conceived in your mama's womb, you entered into eternity. You all have eternal life. It's just a, a matter of which destination you will spend it at. Got it? As for me and my house, we believe in Jesus. Okay, whether it's easy, whether it's hard, whether you don't like me for it, etc. I made a decision a long time ago. I'm going to follow Jesus Christ. I believe he died for me and was resurrected for me. And I believe he made a right passage for me to get to God. And so that, that's an amazing deal. That's, actually, that's the most important decision you'll ever make in your life. But you've all entered into eternity. Now, it'd be wonderful if I was speaking in front of a bunch of heathens because they'd start getting uncomfortable. They'd be going like, man, you're bumming me out. But, you know, I read a, well, I saw the headline. I didn't read the article because I didn't think it was worthy of my time. But apparently there's a young billionaire in America who is developing some kind of formula that will enable him to live forever. I thought, I already got that formula. I mean, what? who wants to live on earth forever? Can, can, listen, if you think it's crazy now, wait 50 years. Wait five years. Now, I'm in no hurry to cross over. But I have this one thought in mind. I know what's going to happen when I take my last breath here. Well, I'm going to kiss Kevin and I'm going to take my last breath. Stop bossing me around. You're... <laughs> Just behave yourself. <laughs> Can't even take her to church without her being sassy. <laughs> Kelly, welcome to our church. Is this a surprise? No? You accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and becoming a member of the kingdom of God and a Christian is the most important decision a human being will ever make. Right? I mean, you're going to make a lot of decisions in your life. and I pray you have the wisdom of God when you do it, but the first one that you need to put in order is Jesus has to be there. Okay? Uh, I, I believe everybody will live a long, prosperous life. Nanu, nanu, or, no, oh, that's Star Trek, right? Live long and prosper. Man, live long and prosper, Star Trek? And wasn't John Wayne in Star Trek? <laughs> okay, if you're, if you're born again, say amen. amen. So no, it, nobody's uncomfortable with me saying this yet, right? Now, you might want to get a copy of this sermon so when you have your Thanksgiving dinner, and because you're the believer, they'll ask you to say grace. And you say grace, all right. You say, Lord, I pray none of my family feels the fire of hell. Huh? Come on, y'all got family. And I know there's going to be a couple people at that table that are going to squirm. Where the worm keeps eating you. Or you can smooth that out, polish it up a little bit. You could say something like, I pray my family experiences the goodness of God like I have. That I'm redeemed from the curse of the law. Of course, they don't know any of that stuff. I'm just telling you, Today, we're going to experience looking at people who don't know what tomorrow holds, okay? We're, we're going to meet young families that are their wits end raising kids. You're, you're, going to look, you're going to meet people that 
what is called lost. doesn't mean you're better than them. It just means they don't know what you know. And how will they know what you know if, if we don't represent? It's going to be cool. I, I, I like it. One year we did the, the uh, trunk or treat, and I found out it's easier to ask questions about the person than me tell them about myself. And so there was this big, big young guy. And uh, I said, what's happening, man? How'd you hear about us? And he started talking. And I said, where do you work? And he named the place. Well, I have a, our niece married the guy. Uh, his name's Jacob. <laughs> and I said, I got a, a, a nephew that works for your company. And it's a sheet metal company. You know, the duck work and all that stuff. And uh, the guy I was talking to, he had all 10 of his fingers. I said, you must be pretty good. You got all your digits. All right, that's a construction joke. Okay, you, you guys don't get it. but I got Elijah to laugh. That's a first right there. <laughs> Elijah has a, what's it? Is it an uncle How's Dukes related to Elijah? Well, he's, he's my first cousin. Your first cousin, so second cousin. Yeah. You got a cousin named Dukes. You don't know why they call him Dukes? Can't say it at church. <laughs> Tonight at the trunk or treat, I'll tell you. And it'll also be a warning for you. Don't wear what Duke's for. Okay, let me keep reading here. Well, it's been nice of you coming to church. Let me close with prayer. No, just to, you know, instead of having our Sunday evening service and singing and preaching and all that we do at church, we're going to shine our light in this community. We're going to say there's a church here, has a long driveway, but it's made up of real people. And for most of them, they're coming because it's free candy and they'll come until the hot dogs run out and popcorn. And we all get to come out and shake somebody's hand or hug a baby. Or... And we're doing it not just because we're, we're so big on Halloween. I could care less about Halloween. All right, what's important here? The most important decision you ever made was to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord. From there, in the, in, the, in the line of your life, there was a change that happened. I know in my life it was. I mean, my world got flipped upside down. I began to read the Bible, follow the Bible, and I changed supernaturally. And man, I've been all over the world. I've, I've cast out demons. I've laid hands on the sick. I speak in tongues. On and on and on, right? Beautiful. It's a life I never dreamed of. Uh, as I look at Steve, I'm reminded, you know, there are a lot of, lot of uh, decisions you make in your life. Like, I honestly believe it's very important on who you decide to marry. I, and the reason I think of Steve is because one time he said he only had one regret, <laughs> that he married her. <laughs> Remember that, Steve? <laughs> no, you don't remember it? <laughs> All right, well, I remember it for him. He said, I regretted saying I do. Some of us get that. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're dialing it in now, man. It's. Anybody ever made a decision that you regretted? That you thought, what? What was I thinking? Huh? But it wasn't about coming to this church, was it? No. But thank God that we serve a God of second chances and you can recover and, and get through that. But listen, heaven desperately wanted all of us saved. Do you think that desperation has stopped now that we're saved? 
Do you think there's anybody in Kalamazoo, Otsego, Battle Creek, wherever it is we, we come from? Do you, do you think there's somebody there that hasn't made that connection yet? And do you think God cares for them as much as he cares for you? Really? And, and one of the areas that the average Christian is missing in is they don't share the gospel. They don't share the reason why they have faith. Now, I'm not telling you you got to be a Billy Graham or some weirdo. Every one of us have a personality and a style. And we have a, a sphere of influence with people we can talk to. But somewhere, man, you got to tell somebody about Jesus. Like, be bold at the company lunch and pray over your food. And don't do the little headache prayer like, Okay? Say, Father, thank you for this food. Ah. Some of you need to share your testimonies about what God has done, what the Word of God has done in your life. And you, listen, I know some of you, most of you don't watch the world news and stuff, but this thing in Israel, it, within weeks we could have World War III. And America could be drawn into another war in the Middle East. I don't want that to happen. But I don't want Israel to be bombed every day. And, and to hear people in America talk about, you know, Palestine. And it, it. All right. I've heard a lot of reports of when that terrorist attack happened, Many of those Jewish people were hiding in their safe room or bomb shelter. How many of you in this room have a bomb shelter? No? Brittany, no bomb shelter? Linda, no bomb shelter in case? Don't you think that's kind of weird? I need a bomb shelter. Do you know why they need a bomb shelter? Because a siren will go off, and within 90 seconds of that siren... If the iron or the the missiles don't hit it, that a bomb will land. Doesn't care if it's a school, a house, yeah, right. a street. Now that would freak me out. Just walking down the street, you hear a siren and you think, oh Jesus. Do you think America would tolerate it if Canada started shooting missiles at us? What do you think we'd do? We'd fire back, wouldn't we? No, I'd be praying. So it's very easy America could get drawn into another world war. And we're not ready for a world war. And I don't want a world war. But it's not about America. It's about, it's really about God. So I find it a good time right now to tell people about Israel and why they're special and why I love them. And I'm not going to be in any protest against them. They have a right to defend themselves. Amen. Listen, if you came into my house and killed my wife and children, I would retaliate. But I believe the Holy Ghost would tell me before that it was coming so we could get out of harm's way. Anyway, in Kalamazoo, we have approximately 300,000 people that live in this county. They're not all saved. How do they get saved? How about, if, how about if starting Monday morning I go knock on every door? And if I live through the week, I'll preach to you on Sunday. Now, we've been commissioned to go and tell. And you have to have faith in it. I know you could be sitting there thinking, well, I'm not the pastor and I don't know all these Bible verses you know more, more Bible verses than the person who's lost. Do you at least know the address of our church? 2775 South 26th Street, Kalamazoo, Michigan, 49048. And tell them it's the coolest church you'll ever go to. Right? We're not all stuffy and hiding in a cave. In, in fact, Jesus said, you're the light of the world. 
remember Dr. Barclay one year he came here and preached and then he prophesied over us and said we were a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. Man, we went from a church to a city on a hill for this whole area to know. And so tonight, I mean, we've been, how many hundreds of dollars have we spent on candy? What, 100? 125? 500? More? Man, if we had a dentist in this church, he'd be happy. We spent more than 500? Double that? A thousand? Each bin's 500 bucks, ish, ish. That's a lot of candy. So you guys must just have extra money to throw into the wind, huh? No? You know, we pray over that candy, that the anointing of the Holy Ghost gets on it. Not only it will be consumed and all of that, but they'll remember. Somehow they've got to remember. There's that one church. There's that one. Why did those people seem happy? See, right now in America, a lot of people are in distress. And we understand what distress is, right? But tonight, we're not going to be in a, in a bad mood. We're not going to have an attitude. We're going to just be pleasant, happy, right? And you're going to, you're going to connect with people. And... I don't know, there's a part of Christianity that is total, totally anti-Halloween. You know, it's a, uh, it's a celebration of demons. And I, I get that. I've studied the, the subject out. But also to me, I think it's a door that you can open up. And people that would never come to a church come to a church and see people there, not robots, not just people. Right? And so I believe every dollar you spent on candy that we're going to give away, our God will bless you for Amen. one way or another. Now, I don't think there'll be a dump truck load of candy showing up at your door. To some of you, that would be wonderful. But to me, I'd think, what am I going to do with that? Yeah, I got grandkids, but only three of them. Will you receive a blessing? I, I have to tell you something. Reaching people that don't know Jesus Christ is very important to our God. It, I mean, how many of you realize how much you're loved by God? I mean, I could preach for a whole year on how much God loves you and we still wouldn't catch up to it. But do you know he loves the guy who's lost just as much as he loves you? There's some knucklehead laying in bed this morning. God loves him just as much as he does the preacher. And he's thinking, I'd like Brother Knucklehead to get saved and get unknuckled and get right. Yeah? Was that too complicated there? I've seen God save knuckleheads. And they turned out to be good. You're looking at one. Okay? Okay? Let's keep working here. Go to John 15. Are we doing all right? Yeah? John 15, I love this chapter. Look at verse 16. Let's see. Now, th these words are in red, so this is Jesus speaking. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. And whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. Now that confused me at first, that verse. 
because I distinctly remember the day I chose Jesus. But then as I've walked with Jesus, I find out, found out and discovered that was a divine appointment. For a moment, I thought I chose him, but he, it was a, a supernatural setup that a guy like me would, would ask Jesus Christ to come into my life. And then from that point on, the direction of my life would change and my character would change and my, my values would change. My vocabulary would change. Amen? Amen. Right. And I grew, I began to grow in God and I found out it was a setup. He'd been hunting me for years. That sounded hard, didn't it? I'm sorry. He's been seeking an opportunity for years. No, he kept sending people my way. I make this decision. Then I found out he also has more than that decision in mind. He wants me to bear fruit. That doesn't mean I become an apple tree. It means the God part of me begins to reproduce. I, I lead people into the kingdom. I disciple people. I tell my family about Jesus Christ. And then I tell my family again about Jesus Christ. And then I tell them again. You know, the, the first three or four years that I was saved, my family mocked me. They said, this is like jailhouse religion. This will wear off. Scott will be back to normal. Well, guess what? It didn't. In fact, that made me dive deeper into God because my thought was, I don't want to go back. I'm not better than anybody, but I just, I see a life I've never seen before. And so for the first three or four, maybe five years, they mocked me, they picked on me. They, uh, every, every family event was a Sunday just so they could say, oh, the church is more important than us. And I, yeah, it is. <laughs> I mean, I already know what to expect if I get to, around you guys. But church, I can learn something. I, I, I can be around somebody that sharpens me. And so for those first few years, they picked on me. And uh, I guess the Lord let that happen so I'd toughen up. It wasn't like I was a sissy to begin with. But, but they mocked me. And then when they found out I speak in tongues and I believe the Bible, it even got more and more and on and on it went. And so there was a little tension in our family which is all right. Listen, you don't have to be saved to have tension in your family. I could have got an amen on that one, okay? Just... But then after about that four or five year mark, they found out I'm not going to move. And so they began to, uh, when they'd cuss in my presence, they would apologize. Hey, that's a, that, in my family, that's a big deal. Oh, sorry, Scott. I go, All right. They began to recognize the God part of me. Then they began to come to me and say, could you pray for me? That's a big change from mocking me to saying, would you pray for me? I have this going on. What does the Bible say about this? That's pretty cool. That's good, isn't it? I mean, if you, if you can prove your life to your family, you've done well. <laughs> ah, glory. But all of that happened because of Jesus. And if Jesus went through all of that effort to get me into the kingdom of God, does that mean I'm more important than anybody else? And listen, church, listen to me. As much as I'm called to be here and equip you and train you and raise you up, I'm also here to tell you, you need to get somebody born again. You need to witness. You need to tell somebody why you didn't lose your temper or why you don't use profanity. You need to say, you know, the reason my wife, my wife loves me is because I got Jesus in my heart. Somewhere you, you need to say, you need to say something. And there's two ways. You say it with your words, but you say it with your life. What if we had a rule in this church, you couldn't attend this church 
unless you lead somebody to the Lord. All right, can I ask a question? In the, in the last seven days, has anybody in here witnessed to another human being about Jesus, heaven? We got one hand over there. Two, three, four, five. See? What if we all got turned loose and started? You know what would be cool? Find the craziest person you see, invite them to church. I mean, that's how you got here. Somebody, somebody told you to come to church. And it, listen, it, it's, church doesn't save you. But church helps you tremendously once you get saved. And I'm, I'm trying to convey this to you. It, as much as we want to see miracles and as much as we want all these other God things to happen, getting somebody born again is a, is a, a beautiful thing that happens. Yep. Now, forgive me, I don't have the address for this verse, but Jesus said, the <coughs> angels in heaven rejoice when one person gets saved. Now, first of all, do you, you, you know what the word rejoice means? It means to break out in praise and enthusiasm. Can you imagine what an angel would look like going, whoa! <laughs> Spinning around, shouting. Can you imagine that? Or do, You don't dream about heaven. You don't think about, oh, that, that, that sometimes torments me to think God wants people saved. He wants his house full. I, he, he might love us and be pleased with us, but these empty chairs aren't pleasing. So next Sunday, we're going to have Taco Sunday. If you come to church, you get a taco. Just one. Do you think we'll have a full house? A bunch of taco-minded people will be here. When do I get my taco? Can I have my taco first? God wants us to reach people. Now, man, I got a bunch of verses here, but little time. And we're not having church tonight, so I can't mop this up tonight. But I want you to understand something. I want to say this correctly, but I got to phrase it right. As, as much as we're supposed to live in the blessing of God, part of our responsibility is to share this gospel. Okay? That being said, you know, we're a faith church. We know how to use our faith, and we're always reaching for what we don't have and, and calling in what we need and so forth. I'm, I'm of the opinion, very strongly, that your next blessing and promotion is directly, directly connected to you reaching somebody who's lost. That went over well, but I believe everywhere, there's a verse in the Bible, it's in the book of Psalms that says, my footsteps are ordered of the Lord. So even though I think it's my idea to go to that store or that restaurant or walk this street, it's a divine setup, my footsteps. You know what that means to me? I'm going to encounter somebody. I'm going to encounter a human being. They could be lost. They could be backslidden. They could be in transition. But I'm going to shine. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going to give them a 90-minute sermon. It, it means whatever, whatever opportunity I have, I will share. Jesus helped me with that. I know a guy who got healed from that. I mean, there's all kinds of things. But it, re it will require boldness. What if you get laughed at? You've all been laughed at before. What if you've been ignored? You've been ignored before. We, we had a kid in this church. He, he came from the east side of the state, went to Western Michigan University. Guy's name Steve Fisher. Guy was a nut but he was radically saved. So every Sunday, there'd be five to 10 people he'd bring into church. 
They're all Western students. One day he brought in, filled up a whole row, and they never said a word. I don't even think they blinked their eyes. And I said, Steve, what's up with your friends? He said, oh, all, they're all from Germany. They don't speak English. <laughs> I said, now that explains a lot right there, man. They just, they just stared at me the whole time. But he was a soul-winning machine. He witnessed to everybody everywhere he went. And he was pretty smooth. He was, uh, he, I mean, he wasn't obnoxious about it. But one day he witnessed to a guy, and the guy was obnoxious to him. And this is what Steve said to him. And I'm not telling you this is what you do. I'm telling you Steve did this. Steve said, well, go to hell then. All right, anybody in this room besides me ever been told that? Man, if I had a dollar bill for every time they told me to go. But now I say, nah, 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 nah. So Steve very politely looked at the guy and said, well, go to hell then. And the guy said, don't say that. You're creeping me out. You want to know why? The holy presence of God was there. And to this man who was not saved, hell became very real as the Christian talked about heaven. And, and the guy freaked out. And Steve said, well, then accept Jesus. That's, that's some hardcore stuff. Now, I'm, I don't want a phone call this week. You told your parishioner to tell me to go to hell. <laughs> Let's make sure you understand what I'm saying. Okay? I don't, I've never used that phrase on anybody. But I have told people, you're going to end up in hell if you, don't, if you don't make this decision. I'll do it on my deathbed it, if you're lucky if you think you have that much control over your life. Do you think Matthew Perry had time to pray the prayer of salvation? You think so? I don't know if he was saved or not. If he was saved, he didn't have any evidence of it. I mean, like even Justin Bieber has a pastor. What's a Bieber? He does. Now, we'd let him become a member of our church. I wouldn't let him on the worship team. I'd say, eh, we got charity. We'd let him tie, though, wouldn't we? But we're not naming anything after him. Right? What? Just 10% like everybody else. I believe in bonuses. Isn't that our, over our confession, bonuses? Anybody in here ever got a bonus? Hallelujah. May the spirit of bonus come on us. Let's see. Can I give you one more verse? Because I'm going to stop. We're going to, we got a big day ahead of us. But, but listen, my assignment today is to remind you, you're not the end of this beautiful gospel story. We once, when we started Kids Hope 120 years ago, actually, this is a cool story. I was in my office in the back. I had just prayed a prayer and said, Lord, I want to I reach our community better than we are now. That doesn't sound like a complicated prayer. I prayed that prayer sitting at my desk. Half hour later, another divine idea came to me. I'm going to go get lunch. And as I walked out of my side office door there, a car pulled down the driveway. That's not unusual, but on a weekday, it doesn't happen very much. And this little grandma lady got out. And I'm standing out on the sidewalk. I said, what's happening, ma'am? How can I help you? And she introduced herself, uh, Jane or whatever the... Yep, Jane, Jane Van Tynan introduced herself to me, said, I'm from Kids Hope. And I'm like, who's Hope? She explained to me. She said, one church, one school, one mentor, one kid, one prayer partner. And I said, okay, I'm, I'm following you. She said, well, I've been offered the opportunity to go to Green Meadow Elementary School 
And, and if with all good conscience, I can't do that with your church sitting this close to that school. Is this something you'd be interested in? And I thought, a bunch of kids? A bunch of snotty nose, little ankle biters? And I said, hey, Kevin, I got a deal out here. So that's how we started out. But then, yeah, remember when I talked about the angels rejoicing? <laughs> I said, I'm not like the Pied Piper of children, but I know some who are. And so my first assignment was to go to the school and meet the principal and introduce the program to him. I called and made an appointment, and he came to our office. And I'm all, I'm ready, I'm in fight mode, I think. I think this dude's going to say church and state and all of that. And uh, before I even started my presentation, he said, I already know about Kids Hope. It's one of the greatest things that's going on. It was in my other school. I went, <sighs> <laughs> I don't have to convince you of anything, and, and he said, how many mentors do you have? Because we have like 324 kids who need a mentor. I said, well, we don't have any mentors right now. But. And so what he told us, in fact, I had him come speak in our church, and he said, I came from a family where my parents and uncles were all dysfunctional, alcoholic, in and out of trouble with the law, but we weren't. And I asked my dad, how come we're not like uncle so-and-so and and uncle so-and-so? And he said, because at the age of 22, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord. And, And the direction of my life changed. Just think about it. Dad's life changed, son's life changed, grandson's life changed. Just one person changes a whole, a whole lineage. I got saved, it changed my kid's direction. In fact, I have one in heaven right now. It's pretty cool. I mean, I wish he was here, but he all right in heaven. So we don't say we lost Nick, we know where he's at. Got it? So this week, as much as you're adding to your faith, I want you to have faith that you can influence people and we don't have, we're not giving bikes away and all of that stuff. You're just being very genuine and leading, pointing them in the right direction. You could be planting a seed, watering a seed, or harvesting the crop. And just because somebody says no, like, for example, can I give you a, 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 my, my last one? This morning, I tried to pick up Paisley, and it didn't go as I planned. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to try next time. I will win her over. It's a personal thing now. All right, close your Bibles. Tonight, we're, today, it's not going to rain. In fact, it's gonna, the sun's going to come out. It's going to be about 65 degrees. Finally got an amen, man. I'm up here chopping wood for an hour. Can you take sunshine? Or... Actually, I'm a soldier of the cross. I'll stand in the rain. Okay. I'm waiting for a phone call. Okay? Because I got a souvenir in that suitcase. All right, stand to your feet. I don't know if I helped you today. So when your friends say, what did the preacher preach about? He said, you're going to hell if you don't get saved. <laughs> and it, can, can, I, can I freak you out with one more thing? Sure. What if when we get to heaven and we stand before the judgment seat of Christ and he brings to our, our remembrance the 20, 30, 50, 100 times we encountered people and he bumped us to say, tell him God loves you. Ask him, can I pray for you? And all, all, we overrode all of those things. Do you think our Savior is going to be pleased with us? What if somebody ends up in hell because, because of me? And, and me not telling them the, the simple truth of the gospel. 
Just a thought. I mean, y'all were so happy a minute ago, and now I, I poured rain on your parade. All right, bow your head. Father, thank you, thank you, thank you for this great salvation we have. And Father, I pray a holy fire ignites in the heart of every believer that we would share the good news of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Father, for the spirit of boldness. You said the righteous are as bold as a lion. and The wicked run when no one pursues them. Father, I know this week, I know it. I'm not praying that it'll happen. I know this week every person in this room will cross paths with somebody who's eternally lost. And we will obey your prompting and share your love and your message with them. Thank you for it, Father. And Father, forgive us for every time that we, we were not bold and brave enough to declare your name to the lost generation. Bless your people, God, in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. and amen. I feel like I want to tell you one more story. <laughs> if I mention a name, would you recognize it? His name is Josh Barclay. You know him? He's a friend of mine. He went to Vegas, Las Vegas, not to gamble. It was a convention. Uh, and it had something to do with pistols and ammunition. And so he called and got an Uber ride from his hotel to outside of the city where the shooting range was at. Listen, a lady picked him up, and he started, got her name, talked to her a little bit. She asked him why he was in town, and what he did, and he explained he was a minister, and et cetera. And uh, she began to say she was new age, and believed in the stars and the moon and all this kind of stuff, and didn't believe in organized religion and so forth. And so when they got to their destination, Josh, little Josh Barkley, said, I want to pray with you. She didn't know what to do about that. He took her hand and he prayed and he called her name out to God. Remember, he got her name. He called her name out and said, I pray this woman does not go to hell with these silly things she believes. I pray she has a true encounter with the living God and that her soul does not rot in hell for eternity. Once, I'm not telling you that's how you do it. I'm just telling you that's how, that's how Josh did it. Then he said, thanks for the ride. Huh? He was just, this was just a couple years ago. Well, I called him little Josh because I've known him since he was, I was taller than him. <laughs> 